One of the reasons behind the survival and evolution of the human being on this planet is our immune system. The immune system is in charge of defense and the repairing process. Through inflammatory response, the immune system is able to repair wounds and combat external agents. The immune system is represented by white blood cells, which are composed of a large number of different cells with different functions, yet all with a common purpose of repairing, healing and defending our body. Our immune system is in constant, ever-vigilant activity running all over our body and ready to face any possible threat. Within this large family of white blood cells, there are clusters of cells with specific immunological activity as the example of T-cells, which in turn comprise other group of distant cells cells have an important function against various diseases including cancer. As we already mentioned, cancer is a multifactorial disease in which immune dysfunction is part of these diverse etiologies. To better understand this, we use a simple example. Imagine the human body as a cell factory. These cells must maintain a specific order for the organ to be converted. This will help preserve the integrity of the organ and its function, as well as the integrity and function of the system to which that organ belongs, thus generating balance. Within this imaginary factory, we have quality control department, represented by specific immune system action and mediated by T cells. Their job is primarily vigilance as to quality of each cell in the body. In other words, the immune system ensures that all cells are healthy in order for them to be fully functional. When this happens, an inadequate immune response is in chain, where cells are unable to recognize the malignant cell as defective, resulting in the absence of an immune response against its dysfunctional cells. This gives freedom to the malignant cell to multiply and implant themselves in other areas. As a result, we have an active immune response, but not specific one. That is, the immune system is active, but is not able to cope with the disease, generating damage in different gadgets and tissues where the tumor is active, as well as increasing the risk of pro-inflammatory complications such as lymph node growth, clot formation, vascular alterations, pain, etc. The mere activity of the immune system is called inflammation. In situations where the immune system can cope with a threat and resolve it, the immune system will cease to be active and return to a vigilant state. Chronic inflammation is defined as the activation of the immune system for a longer than normal period of time, where it typically fails to solve the problem it faces, becoming a factor of damage to the body through this constant pro-inflammatory activation. In cancer, many of these symptoms and complications that patients present are due to the chronic inflammation that they present. It is important to note that this situation may vary in intensity from patient to patient. Thanks to different blood markers, we can use multiple label tests that allow us to determine the magnitude of this immune system activation. This is of great help to identify those patients with an overactive immunological response, with great possibilities of presenting some type of complication derived from this high and constant activation. By definition, and based on what we have explained here, cancer is considered a disease that generates immunological compromise the patient at risk of not having proper immune response. In conventional management and depending on the situation, the drug of choice for controlling symptoms produced by chronic inflammation is dexamethasone. We can say that within the range of anti-inflammatory drugs, this is the most potent, so much that it can suppress the immune response, putting the patient at even more risk for an efficient immune response in some cases leading to the need to perform prophylactic interventions with the use of antibiotics. But on the other hand, this drug generates metabolic alterations as another side effect, resulting in alterations in blood sugar levels requiring in some cases medical management. Another challenge we see with the use of anti-inflammatory drugs is its high irritability to the gastric mucosa, where prolonged use of these drugs forces us to take preventive measures to protect this integrity of the digestive system. Now, we are not questioning the use of such drug or the need for its use in some cases. However, we must always take into account these unwanted effects and explore alternative management that may not only reduce symptoms but even decrease the dose or some cases eliminate the need for these medications. As we said earlier, cancer by definition is considered a state of immune suppression. 
and one of the angular treatments against cancer, chemotherapy, generates an important impact to the system, decreasing in many cases severely the number of white blood cells in circulation that are ready to respond to a threat. In other words, chemotherapy treatment brings an unwanted side effect which is immune suppression, adding to the immune dysfunction often accompanied by cancer. This is why it's very important to maintain the integrity and modulation of the immune system for the good of the patient and the disease. Try to limit immune damage as much as possible and consider combining other anti-inflammatory or immune regulatory measures where possible. Agents such as Japanese mushrooms, Chinese herbs, green tea extract, turmeric or curcumin, essential fatty acids in high dosages, probiotics, and vitamin D are a few I can mention. All of these agents have anti-inflammatory or regulatory properties of the immune system. In some cases, they have even more attributable properties such as in case of curcumin, where anti-inflammatory properties have been shown to have anti-angiogenesis properties. Another example of great importance is the relationship between vitamin D deficiency and the development of chronic disease which is why its measurement is part of the range of blood tests that make up comprehensive assessment. This helps us determine the individuality of each patient and therefore develop a correct dose for each. These multiple benefits, in addition to the primary benefit, which will be the immune modulation, we can observe practically in all previous mentioned agents. Another benefit to be noted is possible long-term use without generating physiological alterations or damage mainly to organs not related to the pathology to be treated, making these agents a great tool within the comprehensive treatment for cancer management.